All right, what's good everybody? This video is about bicep curls and why you probably don't feel them in your biceps at all. And you just feel your forearms working. This is something that most lifters deal with at some point. This is something I've dealt with extensively in the past for years and I had no idea why it was happening. But now that I've gotten a little farther along in my lifting journey, I, looking back, I understand how to overcome this. There's seven main reasons why this starts to happen. And these are all reasons that I think a lot of us look past. This isn't something simple like, oh, your form is just completely off and your elbows are like up here when you're curling. No, it's nothing, nothing that's obvious to fix. These are all kind of more behind the scenes things that we could be taking a look at to actually fix what's going wrong with your bicep training. So the first one, this is actually going to be your programming. So you might have improper programming for your arms. The first one would be having a, a back and bicep day or something like a push-pull leg split or program in general. Uh, s s these types of splits and these types of programs like push-pull leg are probably the worst it gets for arm training. Arms are always last and they're always trained after a muscle that hits them a little bit, enough, fa enough to fatigue them, but not enough to actually grow them. So most of you that probably aren't feeling your biceps working you're probably, you probably one, don't have an arm day and you probably aren't following a split that actually does bias your arms a little bit more, like even an upper lower, which in my opinion is one of the better splits out there for arm training. As, as backwards as that sounds, I'll explain it in a second. But the reason why a back and bicep day or a push pull leg type split isn't good for arms is because let's say that pull day looks like this, some type of deadlift or deadlift variation some type of pull-up, some type of row, lat pull-down, maybe a shrug, and then you get into, say, alternating dumbbell curls and then either hammer curls or preacher curls or something like that. By the time you get to your bicep training, one, you're tired. Two, your biceps locally are just fatigued. They haven't been actually stimulated from your training, but they've been, they've been used enough along with your forearms to where they're not stimulated enough to grow, but they're tired enough to not be able to perform optimally. And there's a reason why your forearms are going to give out, because look at what you just did before that. So these push-pull leg type splits, back and bicep type training is not good for arms. That should be pretty obvious, but it's something we tend to overlook quite a bit. Push-pull legs is probably one of the most popular splits out there. And if arm training and hypertrophy is your goal, it's probably not the best one to be on. A much better variation if you want to stick with some type of variation of push pull legs it would just be to do uh, a torso day so uh, chest and back maybe some shoulders then have an arm day after that and then a lower day after that and that would make the most sense to actually train your arms you're giving them their own day and that way you can superset the chest and back stuff too it's a little bit more efficient that's a split i've run in the past and i do enjoy it not the best in my opinion but it is a, a valuable one so yeah, that's the reason why I don't really like push pull legs. And as far as upper lower, the reason why this works so well is because you can put your your biceps and triceps pretty early on in the session. Like when I do my upper body days, I do a movement for chest paired up with a movement for biceps. First thing in the workout. Most people don't put biceps that early in the workout. The reason I'm able to do that is because I train about one, maybe two lifts for each muscle group on my upper days and I do it three times a week. And you can still train your back after training biceps. You'll find that it doesn't doesn't really affect that much. Like with chest and triceps, it's slightly different. But you can train your biceps hard, like a few sets of curls to failure, and then go do pull-ups or lat pull-downs or some type of row. Perfectly fine. It doesn't interfere that much. There's not a whole ton of overlap. Number two is that you just put bicep training at the end of your sessions. So I know I kind of already touched on this in point one, so I won't continue too far on this, but find a way to put your bicep training earlier on. Like I said, I recommend an upper lower split. It works really well because you can put biceps first thing when you're fresh physically and when you're fresh mentally and you haven't trained your back already. So your biceps are still, they're ready to perform, they're ready to go. And you haven't trained your forearms yet either. So that's another one. Number three, this is where we get into more of the equipment selection and the exercise selection. It's gonna be that your knurling is too soft. So I have a couple of easy bars down here. There's one that works really well for my biceps, and there's one that doesn't work so well for my biceps. So let's start with the one that doesn't work that well. This is just a cheap cat bar that I got off Amazon, probably 50 bucks or something. When you look at this bar, it looks kind of cool, just like a regular bar. You don't really think about it much. But when you actually look at the specs of this thing, 
the knurling is very soft. I don't know if you can see in this lighting, but if I was to like rub my nail on this, you can barely hear anything because it's so soft. My hand slips. So when you're curling, every time you get to the bottom of the range of motion, you're fighting that bar rolling down like this. So if you don't want your forearms to be working, you need a stronger grip. You need better knurling on your bar. So when you're knurling soft and at the bottom of a curl, you're holding the bar like this, that bar wants to go down. The entire time you're curling, the bar wants to roll out, roll out. You're actively resisting with your forearms and you're using a ton of grip strength. Same when you get to the top and now it wants to slip down and you have to use your wrist extensors to keep that bar in place. So you take something like this other bar that I got. This one's from Bells of Steel. I don't work with them. This isn't like a promotion or anything. I just genuinely really like this bar. I got it on sale for like 90 bucks or something and it's totally worth it. So you take a look at this. Again, I don't know if you can see the knurling on the camera, but if I was to rub my nail on it, I don't know if you can hear that, but you can see that that, you or not see, you can hear that that has a bit of a more aggressive sound. So when I'm curling with this bar, I can hold it very loose in the bottom and it doesn't roll. Like you can drop it, it kind of just sticks to your hand, like it doesn't really go anywhere. So the entire time I'm curling, the bar is basically stuck to my hands. The way this feels curling with it is it feels like your hands are just the weight. It doesn't even feel like you have a bar in your hands because it's stuck to you. Like you're just curling with heavy hands. And that's exactly what you want for curls. The bar isn't slipping out at the bottom. You don't have to worry about it falling towards you at the top. You're not doing a finger curl isometrically to hold the bar in place. It's just sticking in there and it works well. Number four, again with these easy bars, you want, if you're using an easy bar, you don't want a whole ton of concave. So super easy bars have their place. That's the one with more of the wavy uh, angles. So you take a look at this cap one. This is a super easy bar. So much more uh, concave where you would actually grip it for a shoulder width standard curl. When it's more concave like this, your hand is angled in. Naturally, this is gonna activate a little bit more brachialis and areas of, of your forearm that are kind of closer to your elbow. So let's go back to this Bells of Steel bar. When you go back to this grip, it's much more shallow. So you want one that's not too, too concave. It's a little bit more mellow. This gives your wrists enough, uh, t enough supination and enough turn in to where your wrists feel fine, but it's not so much closer to neutral grip and pronation where you're actually activating your brachialis it's kind of that sweet spot so when it comes to picking the equipment that you use you want a pretty shallow kind of a mellow concave you want a super strong knurling you want to go pretty aggressive and i'm not telling you to just go use the ohio deadlift bar at your gym but it's if it's open and you have a few extras at your gym and no one really uses them you could even go curl with one like it's not a bad idea and even even if you don't stick with that consistently just get a feel of what it's like to curl with very aggressive knurling. It feels quite nice. Next one I've got here is the bar you're using has too thick of a grip. So for, for this type of example, you could just use, say, just use fat grips. I know it's kind of extreme, but when you use a fat grip, you can feel how much that is working your forearms. It's a thick grip. And when you, you have less leverage with your hands. So ideally, the diameter of the bar that you want should be a little bit smaller than a standard Olympic barbell. So again, both of these bars actually have a pretty good size to them. So the circumference on this, I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's a little bit smaller than, a, than an Olympic bar. So it gives you a little bit more of an advantageous grip. So the combination of all those things makes a pretty big difference. Next one that I've got here, number six, using you're using dumbbells and not barbells. So dumbbell curls have their place and there are a lot of variations you can do with dumbbells that you just can't with a barbell, like incline curls, um, certain hammer curl variations, stuff like that you just need dumbbells for. But when you're using dumbbells, your supination and pronation, those motions of your forearm are gonna be taking place because the dumbbell, you're using it with one hand, you're not very sturdy. So when you have a dumbbell like this, it wants to either rotate in or out at different points of the movement. When you're with a bar and you have two hands supporting it, the bar isn't just gonna like fall to one side or fall to the other. 
it stays pretty sturdy. So using a bar is gonna make a pretty big difference in terms of mind muscle connection to your actual biceps. And that's why I do generally recommend that you use a bar. There are occasional times where something like an alternating dumbbell curl or just a regular standing dumbbell curl can be of good use. But if you're having a hard time feeling your biceps, I would definitely recommend using a barbell or a really high quality easy bar. They'll work pretty well. Number seven, this is gonna be you're holding the bar too low in your palms, closer to your knuckles than to your wrist. When the bar is that low, your forearms are just gonna be in that much of a weaker position. So if you're holding the bar all the way down here, closer to your knuckles, this feels a bit more natural, especially since we start curls at the bottom with the bar kind of by your waist. It's natural for the bar to want to roll down kind of to our fingertips and you don't want to be curling like this through the whole motion. When you start your curl, you want to choke up a little bit, get the bar kind of as close to your palm as you can. So that's, a, I'm in a much stronger position now. Fingers wrapped all the way around. Now you can see the bar is very close to my wrist, much less tension on the forearms, and that can transfer a lot easier over to your biceps. It makes a big difference, especially when you add all these things up. Last one I've got here, this is a bonus one. It's that your forearms are just weak. And this is just me being transparent, me being honest to you guys. You might just have weak forearms. If you train your biceps all the time, you train your back all the time, and you've never isolated your forearms, why aren't you doing that? Seriously, ask yourself that. You, you can't answer that question because there's no reason why you shouldn't be isolating your forearms unless you have goals that aren't hypertrophy or you have an injury that doesn't allow you to train forearms. There's really no, no reason why you shouldn't be doing it. It's easy. It's quick. You can superset each arm back and forth real quick at the, at the end of each session if you want to. Uh, it's hard. Like, it's locally fatiguing. Stretch wrist curls, finger curls, reverse curls. They hurt, obviously. If you train them hard and close to failure, you know that. But in terms of recovery, forearms recover incredibly quick. Between sets, you're not going to be out of breath from training your forearms. So... You can superset your right arm with your left arm. You don't need a whole ton of sets. Frequency is going to be key here. You don't need to do three, four, five sets in a session, but doing two sets, even one set, that's a good start. And that will at least get your forearms kind of caught up to uh, your biceps, your brachialis, your back, etc. So what I'd say is go over, take a review of this video, take each of those seven or eight points that I listed and try to implement each, each one of them, like find what's not going right. Is it your technique? Is it your equipment, your exercise selection, your programming? Take all these things into account. Do a little review and try and find what's holding you back. So uh, I hope this video is of some help. If you have any questions, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you have any other ways that you find uh, help you feel your biceps a little bit more in curls, yeah, let me know in the comments so everyone else can see. And yeah, I hope this video helped.